Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. My name's Bruce Simpson. I am your reviewer. And today, today we're looking at this. The, oh, I can never remember the name of it. It doesn't have written on here. MXP 230, MPX 230. I don't know. It's one of the two. I'll put the words up here so you can see because I forget. Anyway, it's a mini quad. And as you know, mini quads are the thing. It's the, it's the part of the hobby du jour. And everyone's building them if they've got any sense. And this one was sent to me by X Hover. Um, as a kit, this is the fiberglass version, the standard um, MXP MPX 230. And so, yeah, I put it together. It was really quick and easy. I say this is the quickest build of any mini quad I've done so far. Um, okay, so Blackout sent me one that was half built. And Luminier or Get FPV have sent me one that was all built. And that's coming up soon. You may be asking, what's happened to the QAV250 review? Well, I'll, you know, um, it's got this CC3D flight controller in it. I'm not, you know, I've had a few cursing and swearing, a bit of cursing and swearing over the CC3D, but it's mainly my fault. It's a learning curve. I'm quite familiar with the NAS32, but I'm not that familiar with the CC3D. So yeah, there's been a learning curve. I'm getting to grips with it. And it's unfair for me to uh, make too much comment until I've got you know, everything sorted and flying the way I'd like it because a badly set up mini quad, no matter how good the mini quad, will not fly nearly as well as a well set up one. So we've got to compare apples with apples, which is what I'm going to be doing. So here we go. We've got the, uh, the what is it, the uh, mini quad from X Hover. Um, it, it, it is a little porky <laughs> being fiberglass. It's a bit heavier, but actually not that much heavier. Although I do notice it with the hover, I have a bit higher throttle setting in my hover because I've, all I've done so far is hover this thing. This will be a two part review because I've got to do the flight tests. Now you'll notice uh, there's quite a few things in here that are under review. So it's quite a, it's a flying test platform now because uh, I've got these motors. These are from, who are these from? Um, BM 2300 2304s. I don't know if they're any good, I'll try them out. That's what they're on here for. And I've also got the oh, well-known RC Timer ESCs. They're fine, they work pretty well, I'm happy with those. And I've got FreeSky Delta receiver in here, Delta 8. Why am I got a Delta 8 in here? Why didn't I use a normal FreeSky receiver? Well, I'll tell you, because I'm actually going to be using this transmitter that's the Aurora 9 from Hitech. It's the Aurora 9X. And I'm going to be, I've set it up like this because this is going to be one of the quads that I have at the field that anyone can come along and fly if they want to see what a mini quad's like. So I'll you set up this radio gear, I'll set it up on mode two because everyone except me flies mode two and everyone can have a fly. So if you want to know what these machines fly like, just come to our club, come to the Forest Flyers and you can have a go yourself. Got the FPV gear in there. Um, I've also got a new 200 milliwatt FPV transmitter, which I'm reviewing. Hopefully it doesn't have the problems, the occasional problems that the last one I reviewed has uh, and it's even smaller. So I don't know. Uh, so far it's looking good, but I'm not going to make the mistake of basing my judgment on one review item. I've got several of these to review. So if there is a same problem as on the other ones, I'll let you know. And most importantly of all on this one is the little controller board I've got in here. I've got the little, uh, what is it? The Naze Afro Mini, I think it is. It's uh, just like a Naze 32, but it's much smaller and you can buy them from Abuse Mark, which is important because they work out at under 20 bucks. And I know that the Naze 32 proper, people are trying to get them everywhere and they, they can be quite expensive if you buy them elsewhere and Abuse Mark just don't have them in stock at all at the moment. So I thought, oh, I'll try some of the mini ones, see if they work. That's a separate review. It'll be coming up soon, but let's get back to this thing. Despite being made of fiberglass, it weighs in at about 530 grams. Like this, that's with a 1400 battery, no Mobius. Ready to fly basically, apart from your Mobius camera and apart from an FPV antenna. Uh, I'll take the battery out and we'll wait again. But yeah, it, it does feel heavier, but it's not that much heavier. It did have the power distribution board on the bottom, which is great. And one thing I really, really like about this is there's a really good gap between the power distribution board and the bottom frame member. That means you can scrunch all your wiring in there and keep it out of the way, make it look nice and tidy. I did deviate a little from the way most people build these because I put the ESCs on the arms rather than underneath in the subframe there on the power distribution board. The reason I did that was I believe they get better cooling on the arms. And of course, although this is set up for three cells with a 1400 or 1300 battery, they did give me the longer arms for six inch props. So I'm going to, once I've test flown this and once I'm happy with it, I might put the longer arms on with six inch props and some four cell packs and we'll see how it goes. So obviously for that reason, the ESCs will need a lot of cooling, but we'll see what happens. This is just the basic review. Now, plenty of room inside. I differed from my other quads in so much as I was able to put the battery inside the frame on this one. You see the 1400 nestles quite nicely in here, which leaves the top frame 
completely free, great for racing, less drag. And uh, the reason I was able to do that is because I used the, the Naze Afro Mini instead of the full size Naze. And also I used the Mini FPV transmitter, which means there's, there's room in here to put the battery in. One thing I was a little bit um, unhappy with was the center of gravity. Even with a 1300 battery, it's really hard to get it to balance in the center point. So I was almost gonna put the battery on top so I could move it forward, but uh, I played around a bit and I managed to get it so that it does balance pretty much right like that. Of course, these, a lot of people fly these with a, uh, what is it, GoPro, which is a lot heavier. So if you're gonna fly with a GoPro, the balance is probably right, but yeah, I'd rather use my Mobius. Another cool advantage of this is that this little camera up here, because it's not a board camera, it's actually in a little plastic mount, you've got to buy a camera that has the little plastic mount, you can tilt it up and down. So if you're gonna do a lot of racing, just tilt your camera up, and then when you're hooning along like this, you can still see, well, more likely to see the horizon without having to constantly put your nose up to see where you're going. Makes a good credentials for a racing quad. But will the weight work against it? I don't know. Flight test will be part two. In the meantime, I have to say the kit was very comprehensive. There were spare screws, I think. Um, they even gave you the bolts for mounting the motors. At least I think that's what they're for. Um, it just went together really well. We've got blue LEDs on the front, red ones on the back, so you know whether it's coming or going. Um, I, I find it hard to fault. I really do. I find it hard to fault. So I'm really looking forward to comparing the flight characteristics of this with my Blackout and the QAV250 and the Chinese 250 as well. And weather's been crap, so I haven't had a chance to do that yet. But hopefully, hopefully in the next few days, get out there and fly all of them, you know, one after another, just do some one-on-one -on -one comparison. So there you go. That's just a quick look at how this turned out. And uh, read the description of all the videos I do because there's always bits I put in there that I've forgotten to put in the main review. So read the full description. You'll find out other inf interesting information, some links perhaps. And uh, if you've got comments, put them on the video. If you've got questions, if you want to see anything in particular during the flight tests, then please put them in the questions or the comments below this video and I'll do my best to address them. So thank you for watching. It's been another part one from RC Model Reviews. See you again soon. And now I'm getting back to the bench. This is super quick. This is only about half right away. <laughs> Needs a bit of um, TPA.